Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Janet Yoder and Linda Park. And and they've got the garden that Hope built. Love the title. Where did you come up with that? That was Linda. Well, some of the text is based on this is the house that Jack built. Mm. And so our garden is called the Garden of Hope. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a perfect um, title because the text kind of follows that same pattern, portions of it. Our book has lots of different um, entities in that it tells how a seed grows to harvest in a part of the book. It also talks about how our garden began and um, the special blessings that we've received through that and our contribution to the community. It tells a little bit about the continuation um, through our different garden programs. And then it has some really neat teacher resources or, or um, parent resources in the back. So It is beautiful. Did you self-publish this? I want to hear the story about the story. It Yes, it is self-published through um, Carlisle Printing, which is mm-hmm. near where we live in Millersburg. And you've heard a lot of the story behind the story already today. Mm-hmm. Well, I love the illustrations put with photography. So who did that? Who, how did you uh, do all the illustrations and all these images? They're just beautiful. I'm actually the illustrator of our book. I'm very impressed. And so it has um, pictures that are drawn, and then they were outlined with a permanent marker. And then um, I used watercolors to paint them. And then those pictures were then imported into a computer Mm -hmm. and photographs were put into the tops of each of the pages so that our actual kids our gardeners are a part of our book Uh, they are celebrities as you say it is very very cool and they've got and i love this kind of gardening where it's you know all raised and Mm -hmm. um in the nice the those kids whoever did the construction they did a great job they did a great job because our gardens Mm -hmm. are still going strong oh that's awesome um what would you hope to come from this next? Well, let me tell you a little bit about the second part of this book. Great. Um, the children grew extra plants the first year that we were, well, it was by kind of by an accident. We just didn't have enough room in our, our garden beds. Mm-hmm. And we thought, well, we'll just give them away. And all we ask is that half the produce that's raised from those p- plants that we give away would be given to a food pantry. And then the other half they got to keep for their table. So that's how we started it out. And so the next year, the children made more plants or grew more plants just to give away. Mm. So then we had all these plants and it was like, what do you do? Why you have a garden, a concert in the garden. And so um, because we had all these plants, but we wanted to give them out. But how are we going to get people to come? And if you have a, a concert, well, people love music. People love, we can show off the garden, we can show off our kids, and, and um, that was the way we, we decided to do it. So what had happened was, um, I had seen these young ladies called Camille and Haley. They are a sister duo out of uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and they have, they had been at a church that I had gone to, to see them in concert, and I loved them. They had um, written a song called The Ukulele Lover. Mm-hmm. And in it, it talked about the birds chirping and the flowers growing and the breeze blowing and that sort of stuff. And I thought, you know, I would really love to do a lip sync with my students. Oh, how fun. On that, with that video or with that song. <laughs> yes. Well, as time went along, um, when we got to the point where what are we going to do with all our plants? I thought, well, let's have Camille and Haley come. And so with the permission from uh, our principal and all, I started asking people, I said, we need, you know, a little help getting them here. And it wasn't long. Our our community is very generous. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't long. And I had the money to bring the girls in. As a result of that concert and our plant distribution, the first year, now the first year when we had those extra plants, we were able to give 40 pounds of produce to the local food pantries. Wow. Now the second year when we had the concert in the garden, 150 pounds was oh, given my as a result. Goodness. And we are into our third growing season, and we don't know what we've got yet. Oh, so, I can't wait to hear. Oh, um, you know what I love about this? I mean, the, the students obviously are seeing plants bloom and all of this bloom, but the students are blooming at the same time. It's such an analogy, isn't it? Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And what is it about gardening itself 
that there are just so many spiritual lessons to be learned in it. What would you say? I would agree. From the very beginning, this project has been very God-inspired, and Mm -hmm. he continues to bless us through the generosity of our community, teachers, um, families supporting us and supporting our kids. Um, Sometimes I feel like they become almost like little celebrities when we go places (laughs) because people know who they are Mm -hmm. and, and the contribution that they have made and that they continue to make. It's going to be fun to see what happens with them, you know, as they grow. And Right. Well, we're only in our third growing oh, season. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So yeah. our garden is growing strong. I think we've gotten about 16 pounds of produce so far this year. Mm. So uh, Incredible. We are speaking with Janet Yoder and Linda Park, and they are the authors of The Garden That Hope Built. Where can we get this book? Well, if you go to our website, uh, www dot garden of hope millersburg dot com garden of hope millersburg dot com yes got it okay and it's available there yes for sale you can there? go to um one of the tabs and uh, there's the arrow all you have to do is just click on it and it'll take us take you to ebay where it's found on ebay perfect right. awesome okay now you've got a couple of speaking engagements coming up tell us where we can meet you both and hear this story we will be at Moorhead Mennonite Church on um, August 12th. August 12th at, I believe, around 9 o'clock. We're doing the Sunday school part there. Nice. And um, we will be speaking there. And then well, on August 19th, we will be at St. John's Church. That's on Route 39 um, in Millersburg. Mm-hmm. Okay, so both of those, but August 12th and then August 19th. Correct. Maybe we speak. And these are open to the public, even though it's a Sunday school? It's okay for others to arrive? Oh, yeah. They'll be okay. They'll be happy with that. They'll be happy with it. <laughs> sure. Okay. Check out the church if you're That's church right. shopping yeah. as well. That's so right. yeah, that'd be great. Um, not only have the children become little celebrities, but the two of you. Isn't it so funny once you write a book how suddenly everyone wants you to come speak? And uh, you are available for speaking engagements? We yes. are. How yes. do we reach you to have you come to our garden club and women's groups and so forth? You can contact us through the website, but you can also go to Facebook okay. and contact us there. Um, or the other option would be to contact us through our email. Mine is J Yoder, mm-hmm. I S G O H, at at some <laughs> Gmail. Is it, is it Gmail? I was going to say it. It's Gmail or Yahoo. Okay. Yep. All right. So J Yoder, I S G O H. Mm-hmm. Okay. At, at gmail. At gmail.com. Okay. And Linda's is. Okay. We will go to Facebook and we'll contact you, Janet. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. That sounds great. And you will not be sorry. These ladies are full of stories and it's just um, fun and an exciting adventure. What would you like to do next? What do you see coming next as far as goals? This fall, we will be presenting at the OSpeak conference, which is a school-based speech language pathology and audiology conference. Mm. It will take place in October. We're excited about that to just share all of the ways that we work with our students at school and all of the little nuances of our garden project. So that's an exciting opportunity for us yes, it is. to continue to share our story. Can urban schools do something like this? Well, I think you could put a raised bed just about anywhere. That's not what I'm thinking. If you're doing a raised bed, this makes it available to more people than just those who are blessed to be having their school in farm country. Sure. Well, and to this point, we know of nine different gardens that have sprung up from the Garden of Hope. Some of them are um, some of our student gardens. We also have gardens that have begun at churches and schools. So it's not just specific to a school Um, building. It could be a community garden or it could be a home-based garden as well. And here's the thought too. Linda and I presented at a church um, back in the first part of June and by that time we had given out all of our plants and I told the folks there, I said, now we don't have any more plants. Our plants are gone. But if you raise, you have a garden and you have extra produce, take it to a local food pantry. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when I was gardening, 
on a regular basis, sometimes my tomatoes would rot because I just couldn't do. Yes. I mean, school would start and I wouldn't be able to handle Can't all Can't eat of them it. fast enough. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, so I said, you know, I was telling them to take it, take your extras to the food pantry. And someone came up to me afterwards and said, that is such a good idea. I never thought about it. And I said, and all we ask is that you would tell those there that it was the Garden of Hope inspired. Mm-hmm. So that we kind of get an idea of how what influence our kiddos are making in different ways. Absolutely. And this seems duplicatable. Oh, yes. That other communities could pick this up. And when you see what it's doing for students, and then what it's doing where they're able to give back to the community, and then what it does to be able to give food pantries something besides canned goods, Mm -hmm. to be able to have fresh fruits and vegetables, um, which is missing, and in turn helps those young people learn better in school because they're getting better fruit, food yes. and fresher food. You just see such a cycle here of a community helping one another where that lifts everyone up. Um, uh, yeah, we're out of time. <laughs> I knew this would happen. But um, again, we want to go to gardenofhopemillersburg.com. You can go to the website and see the garden that Hope built. Janet Yoder, Linda Park. Thank you. So, oh, let me see what else here. Or go to Facebook, The Garden of Hope, Millersburg. Great. Check it out and have these ladies come speak to your group because they are delightful. Thank you so much, Janet Yoder and Linda Park, for what you're doing in our community. Thank you. Thank you.